Hello everyone. PS Vita accessories. What is an accessory? Well, it can be lots of things, but I'm going to focus on the functional accessory. In my view, if it's just purely decorative, then it's just a decoration item or a collectible or whatever. But a true accessory should have a function and for the Vita it should keep the Vita safe, clean, tidy or add some uh, special feature or functionality to it. And those are the criteria I will use for looking at accessories today and in particular add essential accessories. Now you'll probably be surprised to hear that I don't have that many Vita accessories, so you may be disappointed, I don't know. But I don't like going overboard with accessories. I'm always reminded a bit of Nintendo, it's a bit of a joke in our household. Nintendo consoles have huge numbers of accessories, far too many in my opinion. There's really only a few things you absolutely need and beyond that it's purely a matter of your personal needs or preference. I will also be covering the topic of charging your Vita. Yes, that is the thing where you put in the power cable and you charge up your Vita. And that is a surprisingly tricky topic. And I've seen a lot of information and misinformation floating around the interwebs. So I thought I will let you know what my own experience and research has taught me how to safely keep your Vita charged. Okay, let's go. The very first item on my list as an essential accessory is, no surprises there, a case. A sturdy case to keep your Vita safe when you're not playing. Safe and tidy, no dust or dirt can settle on it. It's just an absolute essential. Um, I mentioned it in my other recent Vita video, the one about choosing a model. So let's just very, very quickly look at a few cases. This is what I call the Fort Knox of cases. It's from Amazon Basics and it is actually not expensive. And if you're worried, if you're someone who easily drops uh, your Vita or has lots of stuff in your, in your bag and stuff rattling around, you want to keep it absolutely safe, then this thing is reigns supreme, I would say. I've never seen a safer case. It weighs a lot. That's the only thing. It is quite heavy. So... This thing is incredibly sturdy. I don't think you can get safer than that. But the weight would be a consideration. So that's Amazon Basics. Another very good case, I think I showed you in my other uh, video, is the original padded PS Vita case, obviously licensed from Sony. And it's really, really nice. And well padded. And it's got room at the top for um, uh, cartridges and even a cable you can put in there. It's an excellent case. Your Vita is well protected. Uh, there are other cases if you want to go for a color. I wanted a silver one, so I got this one. Uh, pretty standard um, design, really. And, yep. It's got a little, it's important I think that it has a flap, an extra flap to protect your screen. It needs to have something on top, whether it's some foam or something else to protect the screen. Because otherwise um, just the case top itself uh, wouldn't do the job. Because there's just slightly give. So those are all good cases. This was a, a very inexpensive case and I find it excellent. 
it's honestly I, I can't remember what I paid uh, but it's it's got these little straps and again the flap and little inserts here for putting your a few Vita games in and you can also get branded <laughs> cases like from Play Asia, a uh, similar design and they were selling them for five dollars at some point so I just picked up a couple you know just to have some more not a bad choice this is a neoprene pouch and I thought well it's got the PS Vita logo on it and you know what I find it nearly useless it's a struggle fitting the slim Vita in. I didn't even try it with the fat Vita and it sticks out a bit at the top so the top's not protected and there's not an awful lot of protection there um, if you want just a pouch to carry it about you can probably find something nicer and better uh, I wouldn't recommend this you may uh, find that you can get a case that comes with a limited edition the Japanese editions in particular are really good for that sort of thing and I got a couple of cases that way uh, the first one is this lovely blue and white padded pouch and I'll just show you we keep Poodle Paws Aqua Vita in there and I wouldn't call it a hundred percent safe case but it's certainly with this padding in here um, it's certainly it's it's quite good I I think you could safely carry it that way in your handbag or whatever as long as it doesn't get you know bashed about um, for just walking around town having it in your handbag I think that would be fine now this a beautiful pouch it came with this limited edition of Orochika. If you've watched any of my other Vita videos, you know that I'm a big fan of Orochika. And we'll just have a quick look inside uh, this box because this limited edition has uh, some other accessory included. And they keep the other stuff inside another box. <laughs> just tidy. It comes with a with a lovely cleaning cloth and a very lovely lanyard they call it. So it's one of these straps that you can attach. It's got the you see it's got the design in there. It's really nice that you can attach to your Vita case. I would rate that Orochika box as a really, really nice limited edition with some very useful stuff in it. The other um, limited edition case is this one. And that comes with my beloved girls and Panzer. And it's just a pretty ordinary case, but it's got the logo on it. Um, so it, that's kind of cool, really. Otherwise, it's just a, a pretty ordinary case, but with, with a padding to protect the screen. And that comes with the um, Girls and Panzer box. The other thing that was in that Girls and Panzer box is this, they call it a playthrough visor, I think. There are different words for describing this, but you can just keep your Vita in it. And I used to do that a lot. You see the um, protective hard foam here for protecting the screen. I used to do that a lot when I traveled on the bus and I wanted to play my Vita but you know the, the sunlight was coming in and, and sort of uh, reflecting and I just put up the the visor and was able to angle it that way to cut out the light so I could see the screen and play my game so I found it useful for that and of course it's also very pretty so a good combination factor I 
got my very first playthrough visor in this limited ed edition for Muramasa Rebirth. And I, I assume it's in the box here. I'll have to have a quick look because I used it for years. Here it is. I used this playthrough visor for years and, and it got so much heavy usage. And that's all they are. Now, some people will say, well, I have no use for that. And that's fine. I can understand that. Uh, but for my needs, they, they were ideal. And I love using them. Now, I have to issue a little warning in that uh, this particular one was produced by Hori, the well-known Japanese company. And this is now... Um, I don't know, probably seven years old, and it's still going strong. It still hasn't, the plastic hasn't perished. I once bought a, vi a very similar visor produced by a company called Four Gamers, and within a year, the plastic had literally perished and it was breaking bits, bits were falling off. I was really, really disappointed with that. So go for a, if you want one, Make sure you go for a, a good quality one. Now you can get other uh, pouches and, and cases usually included in uh, limited editions. And we'll have a, a look at uh, two Japanese ones later on. Western editions tend to not have a lot of useful um, Vita accessories in them. I only recently got this um, Disgaea 4 little uh, box. And this um, little very, very nice cleaning cloth is the only truly useful accessory in there. Uh, apart from that, it had two other nice items. Those are my cases and I hope that's given you an idea a bit of the, the range and, and what is available, what you can hunt around for. Of course, you need to be aware that the, the Vita now being quite old and legacy, these items are not being produced anymore. So uh, you have to hunt around for them. If you look around, I'm pretty sure you can still find something. So my second essential accessory would be headphones. That's a pretty obvious one, really. It's not specific to the Vita, but of course, a handheld in particular, you really, really want those, those headphones, especially if you're in public spaces, but at home as well. Now, as I've already shown in my other Vita video about choosing a model, you can pick almost any of your headphones, whatever suits, whether it's a, it's a wired plug-in one uh, or a wireless one, uh, they will all work nicely. There was, however, one pair of headphones produced that was specifically targeted at Vita users. And I remember once seeing an advert and they actually showed it, I think, with the Vita. It's listed as being suitable for um, PS4 as well as Vita, but the nature of these little earbuds would make them particularly useful for handheld or mobile use. And I'll just show you what they look like. These are the earbuds. As you can see, they have a slightly unusual design with a sort of off-center little ear plug there. And no doubt they thought they were being very clever when they designed and produced these. But you know what? I hardly ever use them because this slightly unusual design doesn't fit my ear canal very well. Here you are. That's the problem with earbuds. For them to, to fit a variety of different ears uh, is quite tricky. Uh, and these ones uh, haven't really worked that well for me. So I wouldn't 
give a general recommendation for them. I mean, they otherwise work perfectly fine, but if they only suit people with a particular shape of ear and ear canal, then I don't don't think that's a you know really good idea. But otherwise, yes, headphones. Pick your favourite pair and knock yourself out. Now the third important or essential item on my list is a screen protector. And I now have a confession to make. I can't show you one because I haven't got any screen protectors. What you say? Well, there are those out there who absolutely swear by screen protectors. And then there are people who say, no, I don't really need one, I'm fine without it. And you know, it's completely a matter of personal circumstance. If you have pets at home and you leave your Vita lying on the sofa when you're playing and your cat or dog jumps on the sofa and then with their paw starts playing with the Vita, um, you might well want to consider a screen protector. But if that's not an issue for you and you, apart from playing, always keep your Vita in its case, then like me, you, you may find you just don't have need for one. And I've got quite a few Vitas and I have never ever had a scratch on mine. I don't know, I'm sure you can scratch anything if you really try. But I have never used a screen protector and as you've probably seen I always have these little cleaning cloths in each one of my case and I just after I've had a session with my Vita I just wipe the screen and make sure that it doesn't build up any you know smudges oily smudges from from fingers or whatever and that's it um, I've had a look around online and Again, Hori, the Japanese company, make uh, screen protectors that are readily still available for the Vita. And I noticed there is a profusion of them, like on Amazon. You don't have to worry, there's still loads of screen protectors for the Vita out there. I noticed one brand in particular called Brotect, which appears to be very popular and they have a range of different types of protectors including anti-glare so I'd say you should have no problem finding the right sort of screen protector. I can't help you with how to apply them because I'm pretty useless at it myself and I don't like doing it. Now having said I don't do screen protectors I did do one once and that was a bit of an unusual one, an Asian one. I can't show you the actual uh, screen protector because I've used it, it's gone. It, it was marketed as being a protector that will filter out some of the blue light, a partial anti-blue light filter, if that makes any sense. Now, if you are not concerned about blue light emitting from uh, electronic devices, especially from screens on your uh, phone or whatever, uh, then this probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you. But for someone like me with aging eyesight, uh, this is very much an issue, especially for eye strain and eye deterioration. Uh, I like to do what I can and I thought, well, it'd be interesting to try this one out and I did and I will um, put some photos of what it looked like and what my findings were. I will put those up. And I have no idea why that bubble is showing so prominently in the photo. Please note the figure of only 20% reduction in blue light. I found it was overall not worth it. The fourth and last 
important or essential accessory for the Vita, in, in my opinion, I always have to say, other people may view it very differently, is a grip. Uh, this is the Hori L2R2, I call it L2R2 grip, and it is very useful for people who have large hands and find that the Vita being fairly small, they're a bit cramped and or they play a lot of shooters and are missing L L2 and R2 and possibly also L3 and R3. And that's where this hoary grip comes in. I've got one here. It's pretty straightforward, but as you can see, it's got these kind of touch pads here inside. They're black on black, so it might be hard to see. And here's your L2 R2. And on the back, you see, they've also got, and this is unusual for a grip, they've got L3 and R3 as well on the back there. Now I'll just fit Poodle Paws Aqua Vita in here and we'll show you quickly what it looks like. So we just pop it in here and lock the this padded top. And that's what it looks like. And for someone with small hands, it's perfectly playable and it's still comfortable. And I'll insert a photo of Poodle Pa with his larger hands holding it so you can see the difference. Uh, but he's doing the camera work at the moment, so I can't get him to hold the Vita as well. Now there's only one thing I found about using a grip like this because I, I tried it when I first got in and played for about half an hour and I noticed when I took the Vita out that the back of the Vita had got a bit warm and I guess that's not surprising being inside a plastic cradle like this uh, but it might just be something you, you want to watch if you're using a grip like this. Uh, and you're playing maybe longer sessions. Kill zone mercenary or... So that is the, um, the Hori grip. There are other manufacturers, other brands out there. I'm not too familiar with the other ones. I've had a quick look and one of them I see that is still available is called Juetsu Electronics. There aren't too many of them around anymore for obvious reasons and I've seen some people try to sell this Hori grip on eBay for absolutely silly prices. So if you really want one, be prepared to have um, a bit of period of, of hunting to find one to suit your budget. Now I'll quickly show you what I would consider a non-essential accessory and that is a Vita stand. It's just there to prop up your Vita. I picked it up for a few dollars many years ago and I use it just occasionally, not very often. So that's, uh, that's the stand. Now, if you want a stand for your Vita, it's a nice thing to have. I have seen quite a few of them on the online retail shop called Etsy, E-T-S-Y. And in particular, there was one uh, retailer there. I remember I'd seen some beautiful ones before, and this one's called Rose Colored Gaming. And don't worry, I will put all the details, all of them, and links and whatever. I'll put everything in the description below. 
you might find something there. Most of them are sort of um, acrylic stands. Another reasonably useful accessory, if you travel a lot, uh, you might want to keep a supply of Vita games in a case rather than carrying all the individual cases around with you. And this is obviously the official one from from Sony, the PS Vita branded one, but there's no reason why you need to get a, a Sony one. You can, you can pick up any little case really cheaply on Amazon, eBay, wherever. This looks a bit like a cigarette case, I think, and it's just really small, and it's got these padded little spaces for the cartridges. That's really neat. And I've already shown you in my other video the, the adapter for the original Vita 1000 model. If for whatever reason you need to switch over from the proprietary port over to a micro USB connection, then that will do the trick. And now I will get on to the hairy subject of chargers and charging your Vita. I tend to be very particular about power, about the current you're using, um, how much you're charging your devices with. I'm always a bit concerned that if I don't use the right charger, I might be causing damage to my device and that can happen. A lot of people say, oh use just anything to charge your Vita or your Switch or whichever device and you won't notice at first. It looks like it's working okay but the insidious problem is that any damage to the electronic components is done over time slowly and then you wonder after a few years why your device is failing, why the it's not charging properly anymore. I really like to be careful, especially where power is concerned. Let's do our homework. This is the original charger from, oops, uh, from my PS Vita 1000. Okay, that would be excellent because this charger came with my PS Vita 1000, but if you have a 2000, you will have exactly the same charging brick supplied. I've checked and rechecked them, and they are absolutely identical. This thing itself is pretty lightweight, so it's not really a big issue taking it with you if you are traveling. The bigger concern really is the cables because you need uh, one for the power socket and the other one for the USB connection and, and that tends to uh, take up space in your bag. I understand that but on the whole my preference is wherever possible to use the original charger and I will explain why because if you were able to see what's written on here, the important thing to focus on is where it says output. And output for the Vita is specified at 1500 milliamps. Now, this is a bit unusual to cover with any other charger. I checked my Manuals, the ones that come with your Vita. And I checked it for the model 1000 and for the model 2000. And the specs are identical for the battery. So whatever improvements Sony have made to optimize the, the battery life of the or rather the how long it lasts for the Vita 2000 model I don't know but the specifications for the battery themselves and the charger and everything is identical so it's 1500 milliamps output if you look at one of these popular mobile travel options there we call them 
power banks here. I don't know what you call them. This one specifies it's got two output options, 2.1 and 2.4 or 5, 2.5 amps. Now this is what I commonly find with power banks. Most of them offer just above the um, 2, 2 amps or 2000 milliamps. And that's getting just slightly high for the Vita. You're probably okay if you're still staying up to the 2000 mark, but I definitely wouldn't go beyond that. I think over time that might not be a good idea for the components in your Vita. Interestingly enough, I have a, a solar power bank. This is really rugged and it's got solar cells so you can in an emergency charge it up in sunlight. Now that one if you have a look at the back specifies the output and once again it's got quite a high output option but it has one option that is just output at one amps and that might possibly be a safer option and I will explain from my notes why there is a slight difference between how the Vita model 1000 charges from the 2000 model. I will show you here in the settings. I've gone into my settings on the Vita and if you go right down to the bottom there's one called system and we'll go in there there's one called USB power supply now make sure that you're always aware whether that option is switched on or not because while the Vita 1000 model and this here is a Vita 1000 I just showed you while it is on and the USB power supply setting is switched to on, the Vita can charge on as little as 500 milliamps, which is a source like if you connect it uh, via the USB port on your laptop. So that is for while the Vita is switched on. When the Vita is switched off, it can charge at the usual output of 1500 to maybe up to 2000 milliamps. Now the Vita 2000 as you know uses the micro USB B connection. You should be charging it at the same kind of output as the Vita 1000 which is at 1500 to maximum 2000 milliamps. But if you're using the system and want to charge it at the same time then any output rating of below 1000 milliamps may not be sufficient to charge the Vita so you just need to be aware of that it's certainly easier and more efficient to charge the Vita while it is switched off but I have to confess I charge it all the time while I have it switched on and while I'm playing but I use my just my original PS Vita charging break the AC adapter. I know that was a bit fiddly um, and I will put details in the description below so you can read up about it but I just wanted to put the message out there that it's not totally straightforward and if you want to make sure you keep your Vita safe and lasting for many years it might pay to pay attention to what charger you're using, what the output rating is and whether it's safe for your Vita. Okay now to finish off with we'll have a bit of fun looking at two Japanese limited editions that have some really really nice accessory goodies inside. And the first one is Tales of Hearts R, the Link Edition. And I really hesitated about buying this 
because I obviously have the Western edition of the game. And I thought, is it worth it? But when I got it, I honestly was surprised. I was very pleased in the end that I did get it. It comes with a lovely little application. You know, these cut out ones that you can use to customize and prettify your PS Vita faceplate. A very, very lovely one. There's an absolutely astounding cleaning cloth included. And this is the wonderful thing, it comes with a pouch. So it has the Tales of Hearts R pouch. It's just a... okay, it's, it's a synthetic pouch with the logo. But it is quite nice inside. It's well padded, just like the Orishika one. And it's even got little uh, cartridge slots here. So I would say that's a nice pouch. And is that all? Look at that. It comes with the cradle. I'm not sure I ever unpacked that. This is the extra customization for the stand. So I've never actually had this unpacked, so this is a first. Yes, it says a Sony on the back, so this is obviously a a licensed product and I would say you can stick your customized faceplate on here and look at it there's even a charging connection there and on the back the connection so this would be let me see I've never tried this before look at this yep this is an actual charging cradle and you just connect your cable at the back and into the power supply. Isn't that absolutely marvellous? I'm, I'm so pleased I got that. That's the Tales of Hearts R Link Edition. And you should be able to find it if you wanted one. Uh, probably on eBay, one of the Japanese sellers. Well, at some point have it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I picked it up second hand. There will hardly be any new ones available, but most second hand goods from Japan are in usually in excellent condition. So this is a really lovely, lovely one that will give you a very, very useful accessory, a charging cradle and a good pouch and some other goodies. Yeah, I really wish we could get or could have got limited editions like that in the West for the Vita, but we never did because the Vita just didn't sell well enough, I suppose. So the last one I want to show you, just put that aside. Gosh, it's getting a bit cramped here, isn't it? My cameraman has to manoeuvre like mad. Now, this is, of course, um, Ciel no Surge. We will finally, finally get a localized version here in the West of the game uh, for current generation, I assume. But I decided to get the Japanese limited edition. And that's what's inside. They call it an agent case, I think, because, yeah, you're an agent. So it's got this um, this cartridge holder. Yes, sorry. Uh, you can have, you know, on both sides. 
and a pouch, an agent pouch. Oh. You need to be an agent to get into that. Now, this is a bit of a mystery to me because I'm not quite sure. Am I supposed to fit my Vita in there? Yes, it does fit. But it's not what I would call very safe. It's certainly stylish. And it is a pouch. Uh, it does stick out a bit at the top. And I would certainly keep a cloth on top for the screen. But just for putting it in a lady's handbag, I suppose, um, maybe an agent handbag, it might do. I don't think it's a pouch that I will use, to be honest. But it is kind of cool. And the rest was um, the game and some, and a calendar. As you can see, a, a really a variety of items from playthrough visors to pouches to cleaning cloths to charging cradles. The Japanese limited editions are just exciting, surprising and wonderful. This one would be my pick of the bunch, I'd have to say, the, the Tales of Hearts box. I really think that's outstanding. The, uh, the Muramasa Rebirth one, and that is, of course, a Western edition. Uh, that, that is a good one, too. So you have no idea how many hours I spent going through my cupboards and shelves to find you know, little items that usually escape somewhere and find all this stuff and put it together to show you my accessories. And I'm sure there are plenty more. This is just what I accumulated through opportunity, good luck, and sometimes hunting for them because the essential ones are like, you know, a grip. A good case those things or screen protectors you have to go out and look specifically for those but the rest is really optional I'd have to say in closing I would like to say please if you have just got a Vita and you're really excited about it great but don't rush out and spend a lot of money on accessories only think which are the really, really important ones that I need and go for those. And I've given you my top four picks, but they're not all essential for everybody. Not everybody will need a grip. You may decide you don't need a screen protector, but a case I would say you almost definitely will need. And I've given you some advice about charging your Vita safely. That's it for today, folks. My PS Vita accessories. I hope you found something useful, something informative in this video. I'll be chatting to you as usual in our weekly chat. And in the meantime, have fun with your Vita. Let me know what accessories you've got. Thank you very much for watching. Please keep well. I'm food for dogs. Bye-bye.